This book, The Power of Love, Blood and Mandrake, what do you hope to achieve? To learn more about the invisible strengths that govern us. Occultism is real. The master who fell that night when Fabio and I escaped, I made him fall. I cast a spell on him and it worked. Or was it a coincidence? The universe is really so lazy. If you say so. Could Fabio have written this letter to Kurt Manchos? Oh. That could be. I never thought Mr. Manchios could make Fabio that angry, though. What do you mean? Well, Fabio wanted to disassociate from Mr. Manchios. Clients who are in love are both a blessing and a curse. But Fabio was here tonight. Money. In our line of work, we can't afford to turn down clients who pay as well as Kurt Manchios. Was Fabio afraid of Mr. Manchios? Not at all. The old toad wouldn't dare to do more than sweet talk and touching. Talk can be forgotten, and touching washed away. Do you practice occult rituals? For protection? For fortune? To wash away the ugliness of the world? Sometimes to survive. I have the gift, and I'm learning to use it better. Did you use your gift on Fabio? I only used white magic. Love charms lately. Fabio became so distant. I just wanted him to be with me, but I suppose I'm not as skilled as I thought. Do you recognize this book? Could Matista have borrowed it from your library? She didn't ask me. How ungrateful. The things described in the book were inspiration for the rituals you performed? Do you really believe that blood, symbols, and incantations can resurrect the dead? They are just eerie tales with a mix of occultism and voodoo. My rituals are a stage to show some of the forbidden pleasures. There is undeniable evidence that you were the original recipient of this letter. What are you talking about? Is it addressed to me? Your protege wanted a fresh start, it seems. This is sufficient to charge you. Me? Hurt my star? Are you insane that you would accuse me of such a thing? He did not consider himself as yours. Since you deny everything, let's move on. Do you have any idea as to how the letter could have ended up in Mr. Vogel's pocket? You were the detective. Perhaps he took it from Fabio. Werner was a little high. I have reason to believe that the intended recipient of the incriminating letter may have been Kurt Manchos. Well, that makes sense. Too bad I can't remember how I came to possess it. Though I did spend quite some time with Mr. Manchios during the party. Unfortunately, even with an answer, that may still not be enough to clear you with the police. But fear not. I will persevere. I hope your attempt to put things straight will make up for... You being on a bender. Touché. Please let me out. I know I can handle the news.
letter proves nothing. Fabio wrote it to Mr. Mancios. It's time to free Mr. Vogel. Do you really think I'm that naive? I need proof, not words from his friend. Very well. Mr. Pinchetti told me that Mr. Mancios was lavishing Fabio with expensive and eccentric gifts. The letter mentions rich rewards and attempts to buy Fabio with them. It was written to Mr. Mancios. Who else was showering Fabio with luxuries to buy him? It doesn't fit Mr. Vogel's character. Look here. We had a deal. Give me the murderer and then take your friend with you. I won't budge otherwise. Well, fine, but you're just wasting time. Continue our investigation while I look at the papers. The air here is rather refreshing. I'd even recommend that some of my friends visit the place. The murder of Fabio did not have a ritual purpose, Mr. Mancios. It was staged by a man who wished to distract the investigation. That might be true. That poor girl, Matista, wouldn't dare to kill the only man who cared for her. So, Santos? Mr. Pinchetti snatched at the chance to solve his problems. Ungrateful little scum. Will he be executed? For what for? He informed the police as to the crime, that was all. He couldn't stage the ritual, but he found the body, I believe. I can't believe it. Why did Werner do it? Mr. Vogel. He had no reason, and he won't be a scapegoat as you plan. You put Fabio's letter in his pocket when he was intoxicated, didn't you? You can't be serious. You're at the twilight of your life. You have no partner, you have no children, you had feelings, however, for one man. That was Fabio. You loved him. That is, you wished to own him with money and gifts. But he was also a free mind, was he not? He turned his back on you. Quite unjust. Love, so cruel and painful. And Fabio, with his words and deeds, made you feel the more wretched. So you killed him. You must surely perceive that my sensitive nature wouldn't allow me to hurt anyone. We can very often deduce someone's life by their shoes or their fingernails. You are a meticulous person, but this murder was fairly traumatic and filthy. After you stabbed Fabio, you were covered in blood. You panicked and neglected to rinse the soap from under your fingernails. The devil is in the details, Mr. Manchus. Nonsense. I missed it simply because of the busy schedule of the party. Of course, a staged murder was certainly not planned. You staged the murder as a satanic ritual. It was easy for you, since you were the one who wrote the scenarios for the parties. It was your way of avoiding suspicion. A respectable man in his 60s, early 60s, who hosts the cream of Cordona society, cannot possibly be a murderer. But the guests who behave like animals in his mansion, of course, one of them could have killed Fabio. I did oversee a few of the rituals, but I did not stage Fabio's death. The young performer played with your emotions. That was painful to realize. You spent so much time and effort to be with Fabio, but he didn't respond in the way you would have liked. You wanted to be loved. But Fabio shattered your dreams. In the smoking lounge, he teased and mocked you. He wanted you to suffer by offering himself to others. The deception was unbearable. You struck him, and then you staged the ritual. You planted the letter in Vogel's pocket and attempted to set up Matista. What poppycock? Sherlock, stop this game now. There is no stop word, Mr. Manchios. Relax and enjoy it. I'll pass the remainder of this case to Constable Oswald. He'll know what to do with you.
Excuse me, are you Mr. Capello? My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm hoping you could spare a moment to talk. Manners, what a pleasant surprise. Most of your colleagues have lacked even the simplest of common courtesies. You're a suspect, sir, but not yet a criminal. I shan't treat you as such. Your case is refreshingly unusual, and I wish to get to the bottom of it. Manners and enthusiasm. Huh. May you go far, young man. What can I help you with? You are surprisingly composed for a man accused of murder. Not so easily shaken, I take it. Life is full of surprises. You'd be astonished how many deals go sour due to a force majeure. One becomes skilled at adapting. I am confident this will all be set straight. Until then, I will endure. Much how you endure that injured hand. Those bruises look painful, but you seem barely aware of it. Were you attacked? Ah, no. A minor accident, nothing more. My heady days as a man out to prove his valor are far behind me. I now know that to succeed in life, one must stay calm and plan ahead. The world will turn your way eventually. And if it does not, then one must persuade it so. Please, tell me how you ended up in this situation. Well, this morning some clients arrived to finalize their purchase of a Copello Modular safe. But when we opened the door, out tumbled a dead man. And I take it this wasn't normal? No, I normally keep my corpses in the wardrobe. Please, young man, spare me your wit. The rest of the day was a blur. I recognized the victim, and it seems so did the police. That was enough to make me the main suspect. Who sent for the authorities? No one. As it happens, we had a break-in last night. Nothing was stolen, but for insurance purposes, the report had to be made. So, police officers just happened to be on the premises when we discovered the body in the safe. You mentioned you were showing your wares to some prospective buyers when the safe was opened. Who were they? Clerks from the bank. They inspected the safe from top to bottom yesterday. I assumed the sale was just a formality at that point. And the safe was closed? It's usually open, but it locks automatically when the door swings closed. That's another marvelous Copello invention. A coffin that locks itself. Marvelous indeed. Help me grasp your movements yesterday. What time did you meet the customers from the bank, and did you have any other appointments? Yesterday, uh, the bank clerks arrived at 10 a.m. Uh, afterwards, I was alone in the office until my wife Augusta came in at 3 p.m. I left for home at 6.30 p.m. And what about this morning? Our meeting for the demonstration was set for 9 a.m. I arrived about half an hour prior in order to prepare. I have one final inquiry. Do you recall the time at which the safe door was closed? Young man, I may just as well ask you when you closed your cigar case. I have opened our safes a dozen times a day for a dozen years. I do not recall. 
You say you became the suspect when the police identified the victim. Is there history between you? Surely you jest. That man and I have never met, and never would, unless he became the first detty in history to use our products. Some sort of family feud? I'm afraid I'm not familiar. Ah, you must be new to Cordona. It's an old tale. Back in Italy, generations ago, the Dettis tried to ruin our family business. They nearly succeeded. The Capellos rightfully struck back, but there has been bad blood ever since. And does that blood flow in you too? I told you, sir, it's an old story, or it was. I fear this horrible event portends worse to come. My wife may be in danger as we speak. I'd like to inquire about the burglary. I'm not sure I see the connection. But if you wish to know more, talk to Billy Lloyd, the night watchman. He scared off the thief. Was it also Billy that discovered the burglar? No, my wife did. She had stayed late yesterday. Poor Augusta. At least she's safer with the police than at home alone. Well, Mr. Capello, I think that's all I need from you at present. Where can I find your office? Here, take my card. Billy should be on site to assist with the investigation. And please, sir, would you check on my wife before you depart? Thank you. I will endeavor to speak with her before I leave the station. Please, treat her gently. Women lack our resilience when it comes to ordeals like this. I shall eagerly await your return. After all, there's little else I can do. Inspector will be what? here soon. You must be the inspector. Would you be Augusta Capello? Must I really repeat myself to every baby-faced man in uniform that strides in? Forgive me, I am not the inspector, but I am working on your husband's case. Then I have nothing to say to you. Come back with the inspector in charge so that we may dispense with the endless repetition. Whilst I prefer German composers, the harp solo from Lucia di Lammermoor stands out as one of Donizetti's finest contributions to the form. I'm sure Basilio thought the same. He... he did. How? Did he tell you how we met? Oh, there was no need. It is trivial to observe how much you value your memories of playing harp in the orchestra. And even an amateur Italian harpist would be familiar with Donizetti's finest work. Yes. Music is a balm in these uncertain times. It is nice to meet another who appreciates it. Much as I appreciate the truth. Please, Mrs. Capello, let me help you and your husband. I am not unappreciative, sir. But I'm afraid I presently lack the strength. Basilio tells me you were present during the burglary yesterday. What can you tell me about it? Oh, it gave me such a fright. I fainted, fell to the floor. I wish I could help you, but, uh, I'm just utterly useless. Please, I want to rest before the inspector arrives. Were you familiar with the deceased man found in the safe? No, I did not know him, nor can I conceive of how the poor soul ended up there. You've had quite the day, Mrs. Capello. I shall leave you be. If I have further questions, I may visit again later.
Hello there. Ill-fitting pants, wonky nose, and hair that appears to have been cut by your own hand. You must be Billy Lloyd. Oh, it's you! I knew you'd come. You did? You're Mirko Gallia, the best investigative journalist on Cordona. I'm a fan of your work. Alas, you're mistaken. The name is Sherlock Holmes, and your employer... Oh, of course. Discretion. I'm sorry. Um, I doubt the policeman upstairs heard me, though, so your secret is safe with me, Sherlock. Mr. Capello told me you were present during the burglary and scared the criminal off the property. Yeah, you should have seen it. As soon as the burglar saw me, they went white as death, ran out the back door of the office. I heard a thud and cat shrieks, so I think they went over the railing and into the bushes out back. Clearly, my reputation precedes me. Mr. Capello was so proud. Hmm, you regard, but you didn't give chase. Well, by the time I made it outside, they were miles away. So I went back to help Mrs. Capello. That kind of gentlemanly courtesy is why I'm so well regarded around these parts. What did the thief look like? Shorter than me, mid-twenties, a huge scar across the right cheek going from the eye. Short hair. She didn't look like a ghost. Too corporeal. Hold on. She? You didn't think to mention the burglar was a woman? Why did you assume it was a man? It's the 19th century, sir. Ambitious young women are out there pursuing a career. And I, for one, encourage it. Yes, yes, spare me the sermon. When did the burglary happen? Oh, uh, after ten in the evening. I was just talking to Mrs. Capello. Does she normally work this late? No, it's the first time it happened. But usually I'm alone at night. I was explaining to Mrs. Capello how drinking water every three hours can help with digestion. When she excused herself and went back upstairs. Then there was a scream and uh, I ran up to the office and... I know what happened next, thank you. What about last evening? Do you have any more details about the break-in? Of course. I write down everything that happens during my watch. Take a look. Fastidious in its mundanity, but I will make of it what I can. I must go and inspect the crime scene. If I have further questions, Mr. Lloyd, I will find you. Oh, don't worry. I won't be able to keep away. Right. The best on the market. You can wallop them, you can burn them. Nothing will work. Blood on the safe door would have been left by the victim. Bruises, torn nails, bleeding was severe and continued at length. Bulging veins, cyanosis, bloodshot eyes, odd foaming in the mouth. Clear indications of blunt trauma possibly inflicted before the victim was in the safe. Clothes are not fully buttoned. Was the victim dressing or undressing? What a rotten way to die. Yeah, what a shame. jobs. Do you know anything else about the dead body in the safe? Well, there is the rule of threes. You can survive three weeks without food, three days without water, three hours in harsh weather, and three minutes... Of you talking. ...without air. I'm sorry, did you say something? 
No, no, very enlightening, Mr. Lloyd. Thank you. Is this code memo still valid? Oh, yes. It's the same combination code everywhere. It corresponds to Mrs. Capello's birthday, actually. In fact, during this year's celebration, I was allowed a sip of champagne. That's when I had to dry my trousers, and then I had to... Okay, thank you, Billy. Oh, um, actually... No. I, I know of it, but... forgot. Have you noticed anything different about Mrs. Capello recently? Mm, not really. She talks to me more when I start my shift. Probably because of the 100 Best Curry Recipes book I'm reading. Oh, and uh, we've been running out of paper a lot lately, so she often sends me out to buy more for her. She's very particular about the paper we use. Not only one store on the island stocks it, and it's on the other side of the town. But I'm really fast. Interesting. Thank you. Um, I don't know. What can you tell me about Mr. Capello? He's a good employer. But very focused on work, and very serious about security, of course, since he employed a night watch of my calibre. Not everyone appreciates his strict business approach, though. Store clerks don't seem to last long in the office. Good to know. The bottle is half empty. A wine, well enjoyed. Recently used, but why would it be here?
well-organized workplace? Mr. Capello is the best. Okay, this chap is seriously creepy. A concert program from seven years ago, an Augusta La Ducha is listed as a harpist in the orchestra. Two theatre tickets for Shakespeare's Othello. The performance is tomorrow. <laughs> I have to respect the classics. <laughs> 